Today the winds have finally died here at Barrow, Alaska, which is 71 degrees north. We've had the previous day winds at 50 miles an hour. Here is spotted seal stretched out to dry. The Eskimo here actively hunt bearded seal. These are two skins which are used to cover umiaks in this area. They can be eight feet long. They are lighter weight than walrus. Behind these skins is the Chichi Sea. The wind has been blowing from the west and has brought in ice. In this ice, a walrus will be coming in. Here is an umiak on the beach. It is covered with bearded seal skins. I'm showing you midship how the skins are stretched over the gunnel. Now I'm showing you the stern with the motor bracket. I'm showing you a more detailed image of the stern. Here is the very bottom and you can see it has no rocker. For maximum elasticity the bearded seal hides are not treated with any waterproofing. In this view of the bow you can see that this boat is meant to be pulled up on ice. It can be grabbed by the gunnels and just slid up on the ice very easily because of its shape. Even though this stern is not fared in that much, it doesn't matter because a lot of strength is required for the stringers where they attach. This is to show the plasticity that the skins have. First, they are stitched together with a double blind stitch, which only goes halfway through the skin. It is lapped over and then stitched again forming a completely waterproof seal. All this is done while the skins are kept wet. And then they are stretched over the hull and attached to the gunnels with lines. The lines around the gunnels are multiple entities so that no one item is the boat completely dependent on. You are probably wondering why am I showing you so many pictures of the inside of this umiak. The reason is that these skins are attached to the in whale and the in whale is actually below the seat so that there's a tremendous amount of leverage put into stretching these skins very tightly over the entire hull that can only be gained by attaching them to these in whales that are below the seat. The umiak is specifically designed to change its shape when it rams into a chunk of ice and sh act as a shock absorber. The whole boat can rack and that's why it is put together as it is. This is a frame of an umiak in Barrow, which is larger than the one that was on the beach. What's very interesting about the design of this boat is that the frame is planned so that the skin has plenty of area for air circulation so that the skin will dry very quickly. This is a close-up of the bow showing the stem with the stringers, the gunnels, and the inner stringer, how it attaches to the stem, and how the ribs are distributed. Here you can see in even more detail how air is allowed to channel around the skin that will be covering this. What I find interesting is how things are attached. They've used galvanized nails and the inner stringer goes to the outside of the stem in this picture. The stem you see in this picture is actually a tree root that has been carefully chosen for this part of the boat. The stem, which is a tree trunk with three roots that form the keel and each chine. Each chine is then formed by scarfing on wood 
to continue the chain aft and the same is done with the keel. Now we can see that the chain is also part of the stem being part of the root of a tree trunk. Looking aft we can see the distribution of the ribs, the floorboards, and the outer chines. Looking at the keel you will notice that the floorboards are attached with single attachment points and so are the ribs with single attachment points. This is a close-up of the bow and how it's constructed. All of the pieces, how they are put together and an overview of how the stringers attach to the bow and run aft. Looking at the stem in detail, the attachment point of the outer stringers and the inner stringer that runs from the inside to the outside. This inner stringer is very important. It runs beneath the seats and the skin is run over the gunnels and attached with line laced along this inner stringer. What is very important about the structure of this umiak to make it work the way it does in the eye so that it can change its shape is that the stringers are all attached to the ribs with only single point attachments. In other words, they're just simply bolted through at one point each. This is the inside view of the stern and the seat, how it looks, the inside of the stern once again, how the stern is distributed, the inside of the ribs and the gunnel, the ribs and the stringers, the stem on the stern, how the ribs are attached to the stringers, the attachments again of the ribs, and you can see they are single point attachments only. This is the gunnel. This is the inside once again. This is a view of the seat, which is actually a lateral brace, really the stem in the stern and the details of the stern plate where there is a motor, an outboard motor that is attached. This is looking toward the stern at the lateral braces or seats, how they are attached and the whole frame is planned to absorb stress. This is a scarf joint. This is a scarf joint and now we are going to be looking at the gunnels and notice that they are double with the ribs in between. This was my first view of an umiak and note the ice in the picture. This boat is designed to handle hunting in this kind of ice this is a plywood omiac or dory and it is roughly an imitation of a skin covered omiac and it even has a mast step which I thought was very interesting. I asked John Heath about what type of kayak is used in Barrow and some local people and they said the last kayak paddler who used this kayak died 20 years before I came to Barrow for a visit. I was delighted to be able to see this kayak because it was very different from what I was expecting. Because it's a retrieval kayak it's beamy with a flat deck. I thought its low flat shape and its gently rounded multi-chined hull must have handled windy conditions very nicely and carried many loads.
quite conveniently for the hunter. This is what it looked like when I left and I must thank Roy Nagayak and his family and May Nagayak for all the help they gave me so that I could see the boats that are used in Barrow. Roy Nagayak and his relatives all go out hunting in these waters in those umiaks I have shown you. Thanks, this is Gail Ferris, your narrator and videographer.